Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. There's another paid request, this time for Lucas. It's for a commentary on the 1997 film Anaconda. For those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, commentaries, reviews, re reviews, topics, reactions, listings, rankings, whatever, feel free to send either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And let's get to it. Have a pause at the beginning. Three, two, one. Pressing play. Now, I believe I saw this in the theater, which I don't know how that came to be, but I, I do remember seeing this in the theater. I did honestly. It was just, I think, I really enjoyed the trailer TV spots that was showcasing it and oh wait tales of monstrous man-eating anacondas have been recounted for centuries by tribes people of the amazon basin some of whom are said to worship these giant snakes anacondas are among the most ferocious and enormous creatures on earth growing all in certain cases as long as 40 feet unique among snakes regurgitate their prey pretty much telling you what the hell an anaconda is but I saw this in the theater, and I remember enjoying it. I still liked it to this day. Yes, the effects on the CGI front don't hold up the best. But I think it's an entertaining B-movie. Roger Ebert, I think, gave it like three stars or so. People were like, why the hell did you do that? I didn't see why. It has a good cast. Jennifer Lopez I liked. This is one of her first early roles, this in Selena. Ice Tube. This is after... I think it would have to be after Friday. I think Friday's 95. So it's... And after Boys in the Hood. John Voight. He's a guy you just fucking love to hate in this. Eric Stoltz. He does a good job. He just... Not taken out, but he disappears for a good chunk of it. From the fly too. Owen Wilson. Who would be in Shanghai Noon and Shanghai Nights with Jackie Chan. Behind Enemy Lines, which is a pretty decent action film with them in it. Uh, Carrie Wooer, she was in Adventures of Ford Fairlane in a small role. She was in some directed video films. She was in one of the Hellraiser directed video films. Danny Trejo, he sort of appear in this first scene. Of course, Danny Trejo would be in Machete, um, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, plenty of other films. I mean, you know Danny Trejo, been a ton of stuff. Very early role for him. This is when he was getting bit roles and he was in Steven Seagal's film March for Death and he was in The Hidden. He got killed in the jail cell. He would like pop up every now and then. And this is directed by Luis Losa. Uh, this is after the success he had with Sniper. Pretty good flick with Tom Berenger and Billy Zane. One shot, one kill. Sniper. And this is around the time he also did The Specialist. I think this is after he did The Specialist with Sylvester Stallone. Which, I don't know if that was a hit. The Specialist is a movie I think it's okay. I think it needed a lot less of the Stallone, Sharon Stone sex stuff. And a lot more of the explosive and the... If it was more about Stallone and James Woods butting head to head and it could have been a much better version of Blown Away with Tom Lee Jones and Jeff Bridges and the fact that you're dealing with these explosives not the same plot but I'm just saying you could have this dynamic I, it would have worked out better plus I always thought if James Woods was the hero and Sylvester Stallone was the villain in The Specialist that would have been very interesting too but I don't mind The Specialist compared to movies today. <clears throat> because this Danny Trail's part doesn't really have much dialogue, but it's showcasing that this guy's obviously seen something deadly enough that he's willing to shoot himself before it happening. Of course, the fact what Anaconda swallowing you pretty much make you dissolve in his stomach. That's why he does this. 
smart idea to not show the anaconda right now, so it gives a certain sense of mis mystery and what does the thing look like? You know, don't show your monster too early. Unless it's a good looking monster, but I mean, I, I get why they did that. And pretty much Jennifer Lopez. Did I say Jennifer Aniston earlier? If so, I meant Jennifer Lopez. If it was Jennifer Aniston, it'd be a different one. But I, I might have fucked up. It's late. My brain cells are discombobulated. But I meant to say Jennifer Lopez. But I, I always like J-Lo. I don't really give a shit about her as a singer. But as an actress, I thought she was good and out of sight. And Money Train, which was before this Money Train, never mind her, minded her as an actress. Never did. I think with her singing career, it, it got her a lot more money, but I think it took her less serious as an actress from the, the public. And I, I, you know, I always liked her and... Eric Stoltz, like I said, he was in The Fly 2. He was in other movies. Uh, you kind of get the idea that maybe he'll be the lead. But also interesting that they don't kill him off. They just keep him separate for a good chunk of it. Which must have been a good part to get. Like, hey, I did to be in this film. I did to do a couple scenes. And then for most of them, I'm kind of just... Lying down, closing my eyes with a bandage on my neck. <laughs> I get to help out where I'm saving J-Lo. But pretty much they're with a National Geographic type of program. Ice Cube plays the cameraman. Uh, Jeff Lopez is part of the production. I thought Ice Cube did a good job. I thought he was natural in this. He... Worked well with Jennifer Lopez. He was a likable guy. Just a likable average guy who had attitude and interesting to see him in a creature feature flick like this. I'm watching it on the Bare Bones Blu-ray. Uh, I keep forgetting there's a Blu-ray from 88 Films which actually has a couple features on it. I just never got around to it because I just never got around to it. I want to buy it separately. I know you can. Because I don't want the quadrilogy. I don't give a shit about the other three fucking films. I don't care about Anaconda 2. Or the 3 and 4. Or whatever. The one with David Hasselhoff. I don't care. But the first one. I think there's a commentary with. Maybe like a film historian. There's. Interview with the producer. There's an interview with Steve Johnson. Who helped on the effects. There's an interview with, I think, a critic. Nobody from, like, not the director, not the cast. Which it is a pretty decent cast. <clears throat> and I thought they actually did had some nice scenery... I know some of it was shot on studio, but I thought they had some nice scenery overlooking the the jungle areas. That you could tell it had enough budget to make it to a theatrical production. And I some this do with a documentary about some tribe that they're looking for. I think this is the only time Eric Stoltz and Ice Cube actually converse with each other in the film. <laughs> yeah, whatever the hell that means. <laughs> and the black man don't die. The black man doesn't die. In fact, he's one of the heroes. But yeah, Ice Cube, I thought, you know, was badass. Get to hit a fucking anaconda in the face with an axe. That's a nice looking exterior shot. Showcasing the wide berth of the the waters as they go into the Amazon. I'll take this over fucking Jungle Cruise any day. The Rock. Fuck Jungle Cruise. I mean, I'll take this any day over that. It's a short film. It's like 90 minutes with the end credits. It's literally like an hour and 29 minutes. 
Again, that's with the end credits. <clears throat> if anyone has the 88 Films Blu-ray of Anarchy, let me know how it is. But, I mean, the, the Blu-ray guy is bare bones. It doesn't look bad. But it's never again a bad looking movie. At least to me. But yeah, this is Owen Wilson, you know, doing these projects early in his career. Just a few years later, he was in that remake of The Haunting in 1999 where he got his head taken off by a fucking, like a chimney or something. Does the chimney have like a mouth thing on it? And yeah, this is very early in Ice Cube's career because this is before doing Ride Along films and Fist Fight and. Uh, Stupid Triple X movie. Well, Triple X State of the Union. You know, different Triple X movie. But, and here comes John Voight, who just eats up the scenery more than the snakes. He's just chewing the fucking scenery as soon as he comes on. But you just fucking hate this guy. But it's like a fun hate. Like he's camping it up. A little baby bird. See this here? <clears throat> but yeah, with be uh creature feature films, I mean I uh, they're my cup of tea. I am a sucker for them. Doesn't mean I like every single one of them. But ones that have a cast that I can delve into or find likable people in them. You have a couple of decent action scenes, set pieces. You look like you have a decent amount of a budget. Or if you have a low budget, you use it well. I think split second. You know, I mean, I'm, I love Leviathan, I love Split Second, I love you know, Moon Trap, which uses low budget well to make it look like they're on the moon. Tremors, Tremors 2 Aftershots, goes to Alien, Aliens, Predator, Predator 2. Um, and I'm talking about, you know, different kinds of creature features, whether it be alien ones or whether it be actual creatures on Earth. And by this time in the 90s, you were not seeing a, a ton of these type of movies. Like 94, 95. Maybe some that would go direct to video. Maybe some that, you know, like you had Mistito, which is a fun B movie. That I think at first was going to get theatrical release, but I think something's happened. And it went mainly straight to video. Tremors 2 Aftershocks, there was toss of it going to theaters, but then it went straight to video. I'm trying to think. Ticks. Another one I enjoyed. Ticks. That one. I don't know if it got any theatrical play. Not much. It seemed like more of a straight to video film. But again, there was not a lot that was getting theatrical play. But then you get to this point, it seemed like studios were more willing to do that. And, and it kind of was successful. I think there were some people surprised at the success of Anaconda. They were surprised at how much money. It made. I mean, it wasn't a hundred million dollar blockbuster, but it made it a good chunk considering his budget. They go, wait a minute, hmm. Did you look at this time? You had Mimic come out around the same time. You had uh, Deep Rising came out. It's supposed to come out earlier, but then it got pushed back to January of '98. And then, you know, years later, you had films like Alated Freaks and these other flicks. I think the second Anaconda went to theaters in the early 2000s. Anaconda's the hunt for the blood orchid. I think what makes the film work, it does have practical effects, which I, I like. I mean, yeah, the snakes at times move a little bit too stiff, but they're still... I, don't, I never thought this movie was scary. That's the thing. I never thought this was scary or terrifying. 
And if you looked at it on that front, yeah, it would fail. But I don't think any movie with a giant anaconda would be scary, because there's no way you can employ an anaconda to be in a realist adventure. It's either I mean, with any type of animatronic is going to look a bit stiff, because you don't want to hurt the actors. And a CGI looks too fake. Even if it was nowadays, it still looked like a video game. Maybe a higher res video game, but still look like a video game. So I don't... That kind of stuff, I don't think... The best way to do it is Arachnophobia did it. Like, Arachnophobia had real spiders. And you had real spiders going around. Let them do their thing. And because the idea of one bite could fuck you up, that's able to make you a bit more palatable for suspense and even that's a horror comedy or I'm sorry a thrillomedy whatever the fuck that means thriller comedy you know it's a horror comedy and I love Arachnophobia it came out in 1990 with Jeff Daniels and John Goodman love Arachnophobia I mean back today I mean almost any kind of animal would be a killer because this is a showcase how bad as anaconda is you have a fucking Animal would think to take this fucking thing out. Nope, it's gonna fuck its day up and pop its eyeball. Because showcasing just how deadly to be. And there's the eyeball. <laughs> pop the fucker out. And changing the picture quality to movie. I agree with Jonathan I. That's pretty shitty rap music. It's not the fast rap music, but it's pretty shitty. You think I used to be listening to better rap music? I could hire someone to kill you. I could kill you for nothing. <laughs> Your mama. That's the thing. At least each person had their own little quirk. You had Owen Wilson that seemed like the stoner dude type. You had Ice Cube. And, you had, and each one had the little personality that stood out. Hey, I thought Jerry Lopez did a fine enough job. And even the studio portions I thought looked fine enough. I didn't think it looked that cheap, the studio portions. I mean, nowadays they would film it and then just litter everything in the background with CGI gloss. And even if you try and CGI gloss, it's still that gloss that's dosable because, wait a minute, that looks more crisp than real life. As weird as that scene sounds. Something a bit phony about that. And then that subconsciously takes you out of the movie. But it's something like... It's like filmmakers are so used to it. That they don't notice that. Being a thing. Or ah, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about that. Worry about the story. Or worry about, but if your story sucks. Or your story is meh. Uh, John Voight notices that Eric Stoltz is a bit smarter than uh, John Voight expected. <clears throat> yeah, look at John Voight's face. He's like, I gotta get this motherfucker out of here. Because John Voight wants to go a different way. But Eric Stoltz, he knows what he's doing. So th even that little bit there, okay, you showcase that, yeah, this guy is competent. Eric Stoltz is a guy that knows his job, does his job well. That's the fucking point of it. And John Voight acting like a baby. Fuck you in your ponytail. Dick. Throw his ass off the boat. He's a dick. <clears throat> I 
I can imagine being on one of these fucking boats, man, having to deal with all the bugs and insects and all that shit. I could not, oh man, I just, I'm like, you'd have to pay me a good, f I mean, granted, to be truthful, I mean, you'd tend to be on the Amazon, and it's a different change of pace, and it's not just a job, it's a fucking adventure! See, John Voy, even at sleeping, he's camping it up. Like, he can't just sleep normally. He's got to sleep, sleep like... <laughs> even sleeping is acting. Owen Wilson, no smoking. Can't do that. I just in a way you can't do that in movies nowadays. Uh, like you don't see a lot of people smoking nowadays in movies. At least within a certain rating. Seem like, I don't know if that's changed. And I haven't noticed it. But it seems like they're much more. A pity on. If you smoke in. That's going to up the rating a bit. <clears throat> Which hasn't fucking changed anything. There's still people that smoke. Sorry. Right, I would love people for not not to smoke because, you know, it gives people cancer. But uh, it's not my fucking job to to stop it. There's nothing about it. Smoke at least the cancer and cancer sucks. But it's not like the fucking movies change that. It's not their job to do it either. I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> Oh shit, he shot the wrong target. <clears throat> and of course, with Eric Stoltz, the, the big story with him is that he was the original Marty McFly in Back to the Future. And they shot a lot of footage with him in Back to the Future. I am surprised they still have not released all that footage. I mean, I think they would make money where, for shits and diddles, here's an extra feature, here's what uh, kind of a original version of Back to the Future, with the, the footage they shot. Uh, it'd be an interesting like fan edit for someone to do, but out of Zarek Stoltz said no, or the studio said nah. I'm, I'm surprised they haven't done that. Because then, like, studios will do anything to try to make a buck. I say that, but, I mean, Disney could have, unless some fucking deal, that like, you reach the original, release the original Star Wars on Blu-ray. Or 4K. But, I mean, that's something that George Lucas put into his contract that they can't do. I don't know. I don't know the details, man. <clears throat> but, but yeah, you get these little snippets of my like, showcasing John Void as a hunter by killing that animal. Hey, we should trust him a little bit more because he helped some of us when he didn't have to. Now, maybe John Void, who's in cahoots with his driver told him hey make sure you fuck this up make sure you drive shitty so that maybe find a way for him to go down there and fuck up his was some kind of bug he puts in there I forget the name of the bug <clears throat> this is pretty much when the uh, Eric Stoltz will be out of the movie for a bit. Which is crazy. I mean, you're one of the stars of the film and you miss out pretty much on all the snake action. Like, he pretty much is out. Like, you think from Eric Stoltz's point of view, his point of view is he did a documentary with a crew and this asshole tried to kill him. And then when he wakes up, the guy's trying to kill J-Lo and he fucks up his throat. 
I mean, uh, John Voight tries to fuck up Eric Stoltz's throat. So Eric Stoltz, he may be told, oh yeah, there's this thing called anacondas. He's like, what? There's anacondas? Because John, uh, Eric Stoltz never is told about an anaconda. He never sees an anaconda. He's never confronted with an anaconda. So it's weird, like, you have this character that's at the beginning, he's at the end of the film, in the same location, and he's never no one dealing pontificia with the the main title creature villain i mean that's i don't know why that that's kind of a unique and then the john voyage is given the most dirty of stairs oh there you go <clears throat> that's be tough filming underwater like that you have to pretend to be drowning but make sure you don't actually drown. I mean, it, maybe it's not a big deal to other people, but... There you go, Ice Cube in to save the day. And there's Owen. And again, that's a way of utilizing trailers, how you can mislead people. Like Jennifer Lopez there says, faster, come on. I remember some of the marketing, they put that in as if she's telling someone, you know, as if the anaconda, the creature is coming for them. But it, you know, it's how a trailer, as I know, in the actual film, that has nothing to do with the snakes, it's something else. Is that moth? Yeah, it's a poisonous thing. And the reason John Voight does this is because he wants to make them think he's more of a good guy. Takes suspicion off himself and... Hey, you want to help him? You want to save his life? We gotta do this. Ew, nice quick little effect. And you just see the po blood pour right out. Because I think this is PG-13. I don't think this is rated R. And that sound effect too of the straw. That girl. Like, like, Ew. Sells the scene. That might have been another Steve Johnson effect with the, the fake neck. Because you barely have makeup effects guys anymore. Because a lot of them lost their fucking job. Because not enough work for them to do stuff. And you had effects guys retire. Maybe they do a direct video one and then just looks like shit. Hey, maybe you could have hired some of these effects guys to do makeup for, I don't know, the new Resident Evil movie? Which I haven't talked about the trailer. Maybe one day, I don't know. If you're wondering, I do have a little snack. I mean, it's a movie, I have a little snack. I apologize because that like you want to hear just a bunch of munching. Put the wrapper here. No, I did not shove the wrapper up my ass. That'll be later. Without the camera on. This is what it will look like. And sorry about the munching. I don't, I mean, this is off tangent. I don't eat a lot of chocolate. I just don't. I used to eat chocolate a lot when I was a kid, but like chocolate milk, but then I just lost the, the taste for it. It's not that I disliked it, it's just I don't love candy. Usually I go towards uh, Skittles or Starburst. For snacks, maybe ice cream or vanilla. Vanilla is my favorite. Maybe potato chips. But not so much uh, <clears throat> chocolate. But I do like Snickers. Enough that off tangent. Dude, why do you have your shirt off? You don't need a shirt off to drive a boat. We got you, got muscles. <clears throat> 
And Jennifer Lopez looks hot too. And now she's a good actress. This is before any ego or anything of the sort. But she's hot too. And again, all this talk with people talk about diversity. Diversity, diversity. That's they, they never happen. Who are the two leads? Jennifer Lopez and Ice Tube. But, you know, people act as if that's never fucking happened in movies. Then you must not watch fucking movies. You ever seen the people under the stairs? Like, I mean, Dawn of the Dead? Ken Frey? I mean, Predator 2? All films I highly enjoy. But then people act as if the fucking exist. Fucking ridiculous. People don't know fucking movies or don't know their history. Because they have to blow up the gate. If I blow up the gate, that's where the anacondas really come into play. Right, there still must be anacondas around because they killed that animal earlier. But again, it's doing the Jaws approach to not show the, the creature. You saw a little bit of it when it killed the animal, but... Plus, it saves money, too. But they also do that to create suspense. And Jaws. Jaws is a classic. One of my favorite films from the 70s is Jaws. When I worked at a video store, when uh, I worked at nights and closed up, and pretty much, it was to the time where it would get slow. So it was just me by myself. But then they also said you can only have like rated G or PG movies. And so I put Jaws in because Jaws is PG. And there's no one, no one else is, comes in like employee wise or anything so. Yeah, that's a little snake. <clears throat> Doesn't look too bad, that whole thing. Doesn't look too bad how that they did that. I did done for real on camera. Not some crappy CGI. Which now they would just do willy nilly. Which is not always the best case scenario. I know you may say it's cheaper to do that. Cheaper doesn't mean better. People are like, what do you mean cheaper? Because what's cheaper? Having to make it, test it, it didn't work. You gotta do it again. Doesn't work. You do it, it screws up. You gotta go back. If there's part of an action scene, you gotta fix the setup or you gotta get rid of the blood splatter or whatever stuff happened. Hopefully, your creature works again. <coughs> but in a computer, they will detail it as you have full control. You can move left, you can move right, you can move up, down. You may have, quote, more control, but you're sacrificing. A physical tangibility that subconsciously, yes, we all know movies are fake, but there's still a part of you that wants to escape into the film. And even if it's not the most realistic looking creature, you still know it's physically there. And your mind is more palatable to believe in it than a CG. And yes, there are CGI 
Porsches that could work well. <clears throat> but it's an overused tool. And it's supposed to be a tool, but it's overused so much to be a, a crutch. <laughs> Sorry about the burp. But pretty much you gotta have this build up before the first actual kill. Which is the... Well, te technically there was Danny Trejo's suicide, but... Suicide of his character. I do kind of want to get my phone and see if there's any trivia for this. Just out of curiosity. <clears throat> and Luis Los is trying to employ a couple shots. There are a couple times where he has like the POV of the Anaconda or you know that shot previously were a little bit tilted. But yeah, I just think it's a fun B movie. You know, it's nothing remarkable. It's not up there as the best of the best. I would put Split Second and Deep Rising and Deep Stars, uh, Deep Blue Sea, I mean, Deep Blue Sea, Jaws, all that above this. But Tremors, Tremors 2, Aftershocks. But I don't think it's a 4.8 bad. That's what it gets an eye to be. 4.8? No, I've seen so much worse movies. Again, the cast, the cinematography, the look of the film, some of the practical effects, they make it, at the very least, an entertaining time waster. I think it's more than that. I, mean, I think it's decent. But uh, that's just me. So I'm looking at Anaconda Trivia. Or more build up as to is there anything around here? I may be also trying to employ well, the black guy die first. I mean, they might be trying to employ that. Try to fool the audience. And this place has always been evicted. Steal all their shit. That definitely shows what an anaconda can do. Bent the weapon all the way. All these fucking... I don't care about the fucking notifications. Leave me alone. Leave me alone with the notifications. Load the fucking page. Shit. Okay, so that little thing... Uh... Oh, no, I didn't... Okay. Sorry, I'm just looking. Yeah, Gillian Anderson and Julianne Margulies turned down the role of Terry, Jennifer Lopez's character. Well, I read that Gillian An Anderson couldn't do it because she was busy with X-Files. So she couldn't do it. And that's why. Ah, <clears throat> uh, this is where he gets killed.
Which, I mean, I like these prop duel effects. I know a lot of people make fun of it. I, I thought they worked well for what they need to be. The, the snake around him. You get the idea of him streezing. That's a CGI shot, but at least it went pretty quick. The showcase breaking his neck. At least, yeah, that was an iffy shot, but at least that went quick. And the mix of practical effects helped a, quite a bit. Especially here. That bit, that slime dripping out of its mouth. Yeah, I didn't mind the... I could deal with the look of the practical anacondas in this. I know it bothers other people, not to me. The largest green anaconda in the film is apparently 40 feet. In real life, the longest... The longest known in the longest known anaconda was 17 feet long. The average length of an adult anaconda is 15 feet. So, pretty much, usually they're 15 to 17 feet at most, but here it's supposed to be 40 feet because, of course, it's supposed to be a special anaconda and the outskirts of the Amazon. Yeah, this is actually an interesting point where this guy wants to capture, he wants to capture an adult anaconda. Why wouldn't he just try to catch a baby anaconda? And hey, it's going to be, you raise it. Especially if it's a female, you know. The offspring grow rapidly and reach maturity within a few years of their birth. So it would be easier to catch the baby. John Renault was concerned for the part John Voigt got. I just see John Renault doing it. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of trivia that really is that interesting for the movie, Sally. Hmm. Not a whole lot, sad to say. Yeah, Westridge, stop being a steer pussy. Just do the shit. Man, yeah, there's not a whole lot of trivia on this. Well, again, the, the cast members don't want to talk about the film. They're probably like, oh, yeah, that stupid movie. I did that. Well, you know what? That stupid movie made more money than some of the other legitimate shit. And there's a lot more people that like that movie more than some of your more legitimate shit. Yeah, it gets a 4.8, granted. But I know I'm not the only one that liked the movie. Try and find the Wikipedia page. I remember liking the cover too. If you can't breathe, you can't stream. It made one 
Well, over, well, worldwide, 136 million worldwide. Came out April 1997. Of course, it got bad reviews, but Roger Ebert gave it three and a half out of four. Beautifully photographed, splendidly acted, and high adventure style. Got a bunch of Razzie nominations, but fuck the Razzies. In January 2020, Sony Pictures announced a reboot. Evan Darty was hired to write the reboot. There was Anaconda's Hunt for the Blood Orchid in 2004, Anaconda 3 Offspring in 2008, Anaconda's Trail of Blood 2009. I forgot about this. Late Placid versus Anaconda 2015. Yeah, we got Jennifer Lopez. I think uh, she was one of the the fly girl dancers on In Living Color. That's right. There was Selena and this being the the first two movies she was in. But yeah, I like The Cell. I think that's a good one. See, Jonathan Hyde, he was Jumanji, the hunter, chasing after Robin Williams. He was also in Richie Rich as the butler, Cadbury. That's the, that, that guy, Jonathan Hyde. As Westridge, the English gentleman, so to speak. Now this whole thing with Owen Wilson, he's being tempted by the possibility of money because of what John Voight's offering. His temptation leads him onto the path of death. That's what you get. Uh, this was the third film he was in. He was in Bottle Rocket. He got beaten up by Jim Terry and the Table Guy. And then this one. So yeah, it was his third film. Just after this, he did Armageddon, Rushmore, I think Rushmore, maybe not Rushmore, but he did Armageddon, The Haunting, The Minus Man, I forgot about that, he played a killer in that, Shanghai Noon, Meet the Parents, Zoolander, Behind Enemy Lines, I Spy with Eddie Murphy, He was in this documentary called The Sweat Bots, which was a, tape, a documentary about the original version of Emperor's New Groove, because he was supposed to be a voice in that, and then things changed. <laughs> Ice Cube ain't having it. I do, can I remember the experience of seeing this in the theater, like any stories or anything about that? So, sadly, I can't, again, tell you any stories about that. Actually, let me look up. Nineties creature movies. Because you had a... People say gluttony, but to me it was a great area. I mean, Greg, you had stuff like American wolf in paris <laughs> but yeah bad moon which was a nice take on a werewolf film where the dog was kind of the hero of the movie protecting this family from this werewolf from within played by michael Perret. 
directed by the same guy who directed Body Parts of Jeff Fahey, Eric Red. He also wrote the original The Hitcher. Uh, Bad Moon's a good one. I don't like the first Connorsaur, but I like Connorsaurs 2 and 3, especially 3. Yeah, the the dinosaurs look cheap, but cheap on a practical, you know, charm sense. Congo, Congo is very underrated as the killer gorillas. DNA, that's an all right film with Mark Dacascos, the star of Only the Strong and Drive from 97. That's pretty much a low-budget take on Predator. Could have been a lot better, but it's it's all right. Stephen King's Graveyard Shift, I Love the Death. Uh, Foot Leprechaun, Mimic, Mosquito. The Relic, that's another one I love. That came out in 97, The Relic. That's a damn good one. Love The Relic, Split Second. Tremor 2, Watchers 2 I love, Extra 2 I don't mind, the third one's crappy, because technically you could put Jurassic Park in there, that was 93. And this is kind of like they're trying to do their take on Jaws, where in Jaws you try and get the, the barrels to try to slow the shark down. Here's not the barrels, but it's held in on the line. It's going to wreck stuff up. I can't hold it anymore. <clears throat> ah, man. But you need some decent moments of the creature. Even that made me think of Jaws as well. When the line broke and almost hit the guy. It's kind of like when the barrel went crazy and hit Roy Scheider. In, uh, in Jaws. When the barrels are going crazy. And I, yeah, I like that they actually employ practical effects. Not every single scene is a CGI. And especially when you're dealing with animatronic robotic stuff. And you also got to deal with the water. Again, the, these shots work because there's the lighting, the glistening of the water, decent POV crash through the window. And you see that it's right there. You, know, It's actually there. It's, it's actually there smashing everything. It's actually there. People take that for granted. And then some of the CGI, I'm glad that it's like very quick shots. It's like they, they know it's a bit early, so. I actually think Luis Losa does a pretty decent job handling the, the creature. The, just the big shots with the person that's harder to do. In the trailer, if you watch the trailer, this scene's in it and there's no snake there. That's pretty. That's one of the, the the iffier CGI shots, though. Just like the water falling on it, off of the the snake itself. That's one of the, the iffier shots. But yeah, it's nice that they employ practical effects with it on Owen Wilson, as. So it kind of helps the illusion more. Same with that. Like that's the actual actor. Going up for a minute, coming back in, into the water. By little moments here or there that help sell the illusion a bit better. Believe me, I've seen a lot of horror films that, you know, go direct to video. I did look at the new Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. I mean, I like that it's more like the game. But man, you can't get one single fucking practical creature effect on any of them motherfuckers? Really? So I'm torn on that trailer, man.
And John Voight, you just fucking hate his guts, man. You're just waiting for his comeuppance. <clears throat> yeah, you... S and also, you notice that he'll talk tough to Jonathan Hyde, but he does not talk tough to Ice Cube. He knows. I think even coming up, like, he doesn't say much about... Uh, to Cube himself. Like, you don't see him slapping around Ice Cube. <clears throat> see, right here, like, he doesn't do much with him. Because he knows this is the biggest threat to him. See, he didn't say a damn word to Ice Cube. See how he's, like, grinning at Terry Wurr before... Slaps shit out Jonathan Hyde. Doesn't do that with Tube because you know Tube will kick his ass. Probably in real life too, but. There's a bulge of Owen Wilson. That's what you get for the haunting. That really sucked. It wasn't his fault. Just a. You only see a better movie in 1999 with that. Go watch House on Haunted Hill, not The Haunting. The Haunting sucked. That's when Jan de Bont, that and Speed 2, he lost his fucking... He lost his... What, what he had with Speed and Twister, he fucking lost it. With Speed 2 and The Haunting. Just... It's like remarkable just how fast that fucking drop went in a matter of five years. In a matter of five years, he did two big movies, Speed and Twister, and then he did Speed 2 and The Haunting. And, went... and Luis Losa did not do a whole lot after this film. <clears throat> like I said, he did Sniper, he did The Specialist, he did this movie, which was a hit. I think he only did one or two movies and that's it. I believe. He didn't do anything else. And this was a hit. That's why there was a sequel. Although I'm surprised it took till 2004. Like you would think if there was a sequel it would have been like 99. Which that had another creature feature. Virus. So the 90s there was this, this area with. Again. Maybe the success of Jurassic Park. Which had dinosaurs chasing people. Like, okay, well, what else do we have? Oh, direct video We got carnosaur films. Oh, we got... How about The Relic? How about... The Anaconda? The Rising? Uh, virus? Like... As if they wanted their own Jurassic Park. And I actually... I like Jurassic Park, but some of those I mentioned I like more than Jurassic Park. I like Deep Rising more. I like... Deep uh, Blue Sea more. But I like Jurassic Park. I even like Jurassic Park 3. <laughs> that was John Voight. He's an actor that was around for quite a while in the movie industry. Back in the day doing Deliverance with Burt Reynolds. And he would pop up in movies like Enemy of the State with Will Smith. He was in a film, I think, uh, Most Wanted. Yeah, the Most Wanted with Keenan and Ivory Wayans, which is a pretty decent film. <clears throat> Usually got cast as the villain. But, I mean, he does a, a fun job with it, like this. Definitely one of his more memorable. Yeah, campy, but fun. Like, it's an it's a entertaining villain. Because that's the thing, you need to have stuff going on when the creature's not on screen. And what you have here is a likable cast dealing with a crazy, campy John Voight. That's a fun movie on itself. And the Anaconda is kind of the extra spice, so to speak. But the Anaconda do their business too. Like a, It's not like... The Anaconda kills one person and John Boy kills everybody, you know, the rest. 
so you don't shortchange the anaconda motif either. And did Jennifer Lopez do plastic surgery on herself? Because she looks different, I think better here than later. So that's what I'm wondering, did she do something to her face that I don't know about or or what's the deal? If that's the case, that was the wrong choice because I think she looks great here. I really do. Stop squinting at me. Oh, I'm going to get a fucking banjo and go, did you new, 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 Bring you bad flashbacks. Maybe that's what, it, maybe this is character from Deliverance. He went so fucking crazy. After Deliverance, he left his home. He went to the fucking jungle, went crazy, and decided to catch dates. Kind of like John Ramble, Ramble 4. Just went to... <laughs> went to the jungle and caught snakes and said fuck the world only John Voigt took it further fuck the world and we'll fuck a snake and it's fucking cloaca oh uh, cloaca was that the cloaca I believe that's the term if if nothing else symbolizes John Lynn Hyde will die, this pretty much does it because he's teaching Ice Cube to drive. Because you have to explain, well, wait a minute, how does anyone drive? Oh, because we have a shot where Ice Cube does it. But at least they try to play off as they're bonding about what to do when they get back. Moment of levity, but... On the flip side, it shows that, you know, Jonathan Hyde's not going to make it. So, thus, we've at least established how, you know, someone else drives. The boat. It's not a big body count movie. I mean, you think about the body count so far, it's been, what, an hour, hour and two minutes in? Danny Trejo shot himself. The animal... Got his eye popped out. The the boat driver, Owen Wilson. I pretty much left is spoiler alert. Jonathan Hyde. Uh, Terry. Terry Wooer and uh, John Voigt. But that's the thing, if a movie has nothing else worthwhile, then you complain about the body count. I mean, look at Nightmare on Elm Street. The original Nightmare on Elm Street is a classic. How much body count was in that movie? Tina, Rod, Johnny Depp, and Nancy's mom, technically. So, I mean, again... But people don't complain about that because it has a lot of other merits to it. And I think Ice Cube works well here compared to like Ride Along 1 and 2. Is because... <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Just Ride Along 2 and Ride Along 1 and other movies of recent years, he's tr trying to have this front of a bit tough guy. And I'm doing this. And... That. I don't want to say it's affable, but it's kind of a, just a more easygoing, natural presence in this. Where it's not like he's putting up a front. It's just, he's just a guy. He's just a guy. He's a regular guy. And he just lets his presence do the talking. He's not forcing it. It's just, he's in the scene. And he's not, I, I don't know, trying to forcefully push it like in Ride Along and, and these other movies. I mean, I don't mind Ice Cube. I like the first Friday and next Friday. I like this movie. Uh, 
I mean, Triple Art's State of the Union has a lot of issues. Even if it was someone other than Ice Cube, I think it would still be a crappy movie. I think this year he was also in a film called Dangerous Ground, which was meh. Ghost of Mars I like. I mean, I don't love it, but I like Ghost of Mars. And again, further shows just how evil John Voight's character is. <clears throat> And she fucked up. She shouldn't have gotten close. Why do you have to do that? But at least they built up like you killed her boyfriend and she's pissed off. But then she can't really kill it because she's not a killer. But then she... Uh... Wouldn't the body float? I think we see it floating later, but I'm surprised the body didn't float then. Maybe not, I don't know. Or maybe he has to, like, get enough water in the body and then it'll float. You do see Jennifer Lopez in a wet t shirt. It's not too shabby. I did when you watch the film, there's not as much CGI as I remember. There was the, like the two big attacks. One on the, on the driver and one on Owen Wilson. Well, I, I like the fact that you, utilizing, the, there's a lot of practical when you watch it again. And, you know, obviously they don't use it a whole lot. They use snippets. It's kind of like Jaws. Like the first Jaws. They use what they can. Little snippets here that you see is slithering through the... They try to save it for the big shots that they have like the... Well, this is our last resort, so to speak. Oh, come on, J-Lo, shoot the fucking gun, man. Ice Cube kicked him in the balls if he has any. But there you go, beat the shit out of him. <clears throat> come on, J-Lo, shoot the gun! I thought that was kind of a cool shot, though. The grab him in midair. I think I think for a CGI shot, that works fine because it's a far away shot. It being a far away shot and the way the light, I yeah, I think that shot actually works not too not too shabby. And that's probably cool. I mean, you got real people having to jump out of the way of this fucking tree, and that establishes. Eric still being woken up. Like, why does he wake up now? Oh, because the whole fucking thing shook because of the tree. Like, there's little moments here and there where the strip is not as shabby as Razzies make it out to be. But the Razzies are full of shit. The Razzies are pretty much one of the worst films of, of the year. This is the same, this is the same organization, if you want to call them that. That said that fucking John Carver's The Thing, Ennio Morricone's score, was the worst score of 82. That, you know, Sylvester Stallone is the worst actor of the decade. Even for films like Lock Up. So, I mean, Rambo 2, worst movie of 1985. I mean, they're full of shit. Razzies. They did some right, but a dog shines on a... A sun shines on a dog's ass once in a while. We get Lopez getting her moment to shine. <clears throat> I didn't like why is it not biting Ice Cube because it's distracted with this other body. Ooh, nice practical effect, blowing the shit out of the face. There you go.
Nice moment to shine there. And Ice Cube, why he's struggling? Because he almost got crushed by a fucking anaconda. Oh, he saves uh, Ice Cube, not uh, J Lo. But here you go. The Fizbo would shine now. I like the blood. There you go. See, they cut away very quick, probably for the rating. I'm sure the MPA is like. To, as soon as that blood went into the banners, they quickly cut away. But I like that. I th that sells the illusion. Where you, boom, you see this blood seeping through the band. You're like, Ew, yeah, that's right. He had a hole in his neck. I didn't give him a moment to shine. Uh, nice for the character. Simple action made some easily easy to root for. Again, the, the way it looks, like the way it's shot, the slow camera movements, <clears throat> it's not a badly directed movie. I'm watching this again, I'm like, why does it get a 4.8? No, it's not a 5 out of 5 star movie. But a 4.8, like, probably the same fucking people that give, I don't know. Later of a horror movie that came out this year, old. The new M Night Shyamalan fucking Ding Dong movie. Fucking four out of five stars. That movie sucks. Old. Such old dick. <clears throat> and then there were two. Well, technically there's three. Aristos is on the boat, but for walk around two. I didn't. You give each character the moment. Like Jennifer Lopez got her moment to shine. Ice Tube's going to get his moment. Put a fucking axe in a damn man on his head. I think he even says, bitch. Ah, <clears throat> uh, yeah. Twirling the camera around. As if it's unraveling from the top of a tree. As they're being watched. Why does it feel like somebody's watching me? Why does it feel like somebody's watching me? Um, hour and 13, so 23, 16 minutes with credits. And yeah, I think about probably four minutes of credits. <clears throat> so. That'd be about like 12 minutes left of action. Oh yeah, because they get caught by John Voight, and then John Voight does this whole trap thing. <clears throat> idea, not too bad of an idea that you have these little POV shots where the camera's twirling in these kind of circles. I mean, the show, just keep the illusion of the anaconda creature alive. Obviously, there would be more than one. Because, again, his big deal is to catch one alive. What you did, and then makes you go, well, why don't you just... All this time, why didn't you just catch a baby anaconda and raise it? 
because how many years have you been doing this? If it takes just a few years for an anaconda to mature, it would be a lot easier for you to do it that way. Hey, you have three or four or five anacondas. But yeah, you don't see a lot of these type of movies made nowadays because these movies are labeled as corny, cheesy, goofy, silly, stupid. And if they do attempt this, it'd be crappy CGI or the top CGI. And look a little budget like Resident Evil, the Netflix movie. <clears throat> See, at least this, boom, you got some close-ups of an actual, you know, a fet. I think for the time in 1997, these looked rather decent. I'm sorry, I'm not going to fucking make fun of it when in 1997... And you have CGI moments that are quick shots... Kind of do the moments they can't and then they intersperse with the protocol that helps sell the illusion better i think if you don't have cg mix it with some practical some tangible stuff i like hear you see it's a real thing in the net there's a real thing they're struggling with your actors I think this is the, the other CGI moment here. But yeah, I like that they mix CG with the, the practical. I keep harping on that because it's something that doesn't register with a lot of folks nowadays. I don't know, this CGI, I mean, is, I've seen worse on Sci-Fi Channel. Yeah, that popping of the, the vein, popping of the cheek. If you want to see one guy get swallowed up, it'd be this guy. <laughs> and the POV of just seeing him get swallowed whole. Couldn't happen to a better person. <laughs> That's how all these going. Whoa! Like for CGI, I mean, I've seen worse than that bit. I really have. I've seen much worse. I mean, people want to bitch about diversity. There you go. Who got killed? The white guy. Who's the two stars living? Lopez and Ice Tube. Do I give a fuck? No. Because the movie didn't give a fuck about that. It wasn't trying to do some fucking lecture of any sort. It's just, here's the cast. Here's the story. It's about survival. There you go. Which is all we care about at the end of the fucking day. Lo and fucking behold. Again, I, I'm kind of marveling just how... <laughs> uh, slightly digested John Voight. <laughs> and that wink is kind of like almost like a wink to the audience. Like, this is the kind of movie we are, man. This is the kind of movie we are. But yes, I, you know, like, like I said, each one gets their moment. J-Lo 
shot the shit out of the other one. Ice Cube gets the idea here to blow the fuck up, then puts an axe to his fucking face. Has a stut there. <clears throat> I mean, I wish they made more movies like this. I mean, but again, you see, it's a four point A and I'm to B, and people don't. People don't. I just don't want to see movies like this. They don't want fun movies. They want shit like fucking like *Malignant*. *Malignant* had a lot of fun in it, and that film bombed. We want to see movie. Instead, they want to see bullshit like *Hereditary*. Or fucking, what was that guy, the goddamn movie Ari Aster did? The one with the, I forget what the fuck it was called already. Midsommar. Terry, fuck Midsommar. I'll take Anaconda over those any fucking day. So you got like a real explosion of this pillar. And this CGI on fire I could deal with. Just, at 1997 it'd be hard to do that. But that's a cool shot. I, I don't care. That's a cool shot to have this fucking thing on fire. I think that looks pretty fucking neat. I didn't how hard that is like you gotta do an animatronic yeah I have it on fire you know hope that it doesn't burn the circuits to short it so it stops working finally got the idea don't you fucking head down so you can stop burning But yeah, I let the audience in for one last year. And I say there's no sequel bait ending. There's no bullshit twist or downbeat out of nowhere that we just did it for the shitting doodle shock value, but doesn't amount to much. It told its story. Kill the monster. Bean bam boom. There we go. Bitch. <laughs> Satisfied. Acts right to the fucking head. And each one got their moment to shine. There were two anacondas. Each one got a kill. Again, that's the right way to do it. Shows that each one served their purpose and equal... I didn't. You looked at Eric Stoltz. Now, one time was they ever involved with an anaconda. It was, I went into the water. I got fucked up. I woke up. John Voice doing stuff. I'm not doubting. I wake up. Everything's fine. So, for a movie called Eric Anaconda, he's the. He had no affiliation with it. I mean, it's. It, I don't know why that interests me so much. It's like, well, you know, that's true. And that's... It's not uh, common. <laughs> it's not typical. <clears throat> and that's the tribe they were looking for the whole time. Granted, like, most of our crew is dead. Don't we have to get you to the hospital, though, dude? I mean, you still have a thing in your throat. It's not like you I cut it from, you know, saw with a Band-Aid. There they go off into the distance. Not a bad score. Not a bad musical score. 
And yeah, it fits with that Amazon adventure quality to it. Nice looking shot with the orange sunset approach. Hour and 25 minutes. Trevor Lopez, Ice Cube, John Voigt, Eric Stoltz, Jonathan Hyde, Owen Wilson, Carrie Ruhr. Most of them recognizable people. Uh, let's see. Seeing it in the credits, anybody else I recognize. But yeah, I thought the film still a fun movie. Still a fun B movie that it has a good cast. Surprising amount of practical effects now that I watch it again. A few CGI. Which is not the best. But again. Still above what Sci-Fi Channel does. And again the use of mixture of practical effects. And I like the look of the, the Anacondas. I do. I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. Brazil crew, so they guess they shot this a lot in Brazil. Okay, I'm fast forward to see if there's anything. Animatronic effects created by Edge Innovations. Edge Innovations. Not bad, not bad at all. Prosthetic and additional animatronic effects by Steve Johnson's effects. Prosthetic, probably like maybe like the the throat thing and such. <laughs> oh, that rap song was written by Ice Cube, performed by Matt Ten, so that's why it was in there because Ice Cube wrote the song. Filmed in Brazil, Manaus, and at the Abor Arboretum of LA County. So yeah, part of it was shot in Brazil. But yeah, I I think it's a fun movie. I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. I don't think I don't think it's a four point eight bad. And I'd be curious to get the Blu-ray with features. I mean, it just, I think that's why I haven't been gun ho because there's no, nothing from the director or the writer or the actors involved on the features. And it's like, eh. so that, that sucks. But, uh, yeah, Anaconda, not a bad film at all, in my opinion. As a B-movie film, it does its job. And, uh. That's more than a lot of movies do nowadays. So we'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.